Okay, in this section we're going to be talking about extrema of functions and this and when we are applying our derivative in this last unit we have here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be describing, describing the graphs, a lot of the uh, properties of the graphs that you talked about back in algebra 2, things like increasing and decreasing and maximums and minimums and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to go back and teach you the calculus behind all of that. So here we go. First of all, let's talk about a max of a function, a uh, max and a min of a function. Uh, specifically, a maximum of a function occurs when f of c is a max of f if f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all values of f. values in an interval from A to B. Yeah, the same thing true about a min, but this time it's going to be um, that f of x is greater than or equal to f of c. So f of c is a minimum of the function f if f of x is greater than or equal to f of c for all values of f on an interval from a to b. We're going to be talking about um, finding the maxes and mins a little bit later on in this lesson, and we'll take a look at those endpoints from a to b. Okay. Um, when we take a look at uh, a lot of times with our graphs, we have different turning points and all that kind of stuff. Let's just take a polynomial function, like, like a cubic function. Let's say we have something like this. It looks like this. And um, this point right here, let's just give that point um, a, a value of A. And this point right here, an ordered pair of B. Uh, we say that A and B are local extrema of functions, local maxes and mins. So A would be a local max because it is um, higher than all the other points um, nearby, kind of the relative, um, you know, how close it is, and B is the local min as well. Um, um, to, to identify where these local maxes and mins occur, uh, there's going to be some different things that we do, but one of the things we talk about is we talk about finding, identifying the critical numbers. And the critical numbers are going to be where the derivative is zero or undefined because those are our potential turning points. And we'll continue with this a little bit later on um, in the next few lessons when we talk about our first derivative test and our second derivative test. But these points A and B are called critical numbers. And um, if you have if you have f prime of c equals zero, or if f prime of C. So my critical numbers occur where f prime of C is equal to zero, or f prime of C does not exist. If we have like a, a break in the graph, we've got to look at what's going on around those points. And what happens, like in this particular drawing that I have, at A and at B, you're going to see that f prime of C would be zero. That's where I'd have a horizontal tangent line. Those become potential turning points or potential um, maximum points or local maximum points and local minimum points. So these critical numbers are very important. Then we use this information along with some defined, uh, and I'll do an example of this, for finding an extreme of a function. Let's say I give you some guidelines here. Um, the first thing you want to do, you want to find your critical numbers. So find where 
your derivative is equal to zero where your derivative is undefined. You want to then calculate the value of the original function at these critical numbers. So you want to find, um, you know, what if I plug them into the original equation, what are the values? You then want to find the values of the endpoint. So if I look at if my function def is defined on an interval from A to B, and I only want to consider the critical numbers that fall in the interval between A and B, not only do I have to find f of c, the f of the critical number, I also have to find the endpoints. I need to find f of a and f of b, because they might be larger or smaller than f of c. And then um, if you compare steps 2 and 3, uh, the largest... is the max and then the smallest is the min. So when I get, when a lot of times you'll see questions like this on the AP exam, what they'll do is they'll give you a function, they'll give you an interval, and they'll ask you for the extrema of the function on that particular interval. And that's when you have to apply this. Just when you have to find the maximum or uh, the absolute maximum on the, on the interval that's given to you. So let's just take a real quick example of this. Easy polynomial function. These problems become harder. They become um, more or less difficult based upon the derivative. So let's say that I tell you that f of x is equal to 6x squared minus x cubed. And let's define it on the interval from negative 1 to 5. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative and set it equal to 0. So f prime of x is equal to 12x minus 3x squared. If I set that equal to 0 and I solve that, um, I find that um, I'm going to have my critical numbers at 0 and at 4. So if I solve the set equal to 0, I find critical numbers at x equals 0 or 4. You can solve that by factoring. Just you know, factor out a 3x here, and then you get 4 minus um, x equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0, so on and so forth. Now I need to calculate four values. 0 and 4 both fall in the interval between negative 1 and 5. So I need to calculate f of negative 1 which I did real quickly, and now I'm putting this f of, I'm putting the negative 1 back in the original equation. When I calculate that, I get 7. I need to calculate f of 0, and f of 0, I get 0. I need to calculate f of 4, and for f of 4, I got 32. And then for f of 5, I need to calculate the other endpoint, f of 5, I got 25. What that means is that the absolute min and the absolute max of this function, the absolute min occurs at x equals 0, and the absolute min of the function is 0. The absolute max of the function on the interval between negative 1 and 5 occurs at x equals 4, and the absolute maximum value is 32. So we're going to be working with this. We'll be working with these concepts of finding extrema. We'll be um, putting in, or using it in conjunction with increasing and decreasing with our first derivative test in our next in our next section. Uh, big important thing for you tonight, or the big important thing for the lesson that I'm giving you here, is that you need to be able to identify and find those critical numbers. And remember, it's not just where the derivative is equal to zero; it's also where the derivative is not defined. Um, Good luck. The problems get more or less difficult just based upon how hard it is to find the derivative and how hard it is to solve them.